Hey everybody, it's Friday. I'm Matthew Laria and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast and then we're gonna get right into the word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your word. And Lord, we thank you so much for all the good things you've been showing to us this week on the broadcast. We ask you again today for revelation of your word. We ask you for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice and to see it work in our lives, and we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we've been doing a series of teachings entitled The Dream Killer, and we've been learning how vitally important it is to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. If we walk in the flesh, it will kill every good dream, every good plan that God has for us. But when we walk in the Spirit, and are led by the Holy Spirit, He will lead us into the good things, into the good plans, into the good dreams that God has for us. And that's good news, isn't it? Now let's go back over to Galatians chapter 5, and let's look at our foundation scripture again in verse 16. It says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, friend, how are we going to do that? How do we walk in the Spirit and not be governed by our flesh? Well, it starts by understanding that we are tripart beings. We are spirit beings, we have souls, and we live in physical bodies. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says, The very God of peace sanctify you wholly or completely, I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so you can see from that verse that we are not just bodies. We are not just minds. Um, we are not just spirits, but we are spirit beings who live in bodies and we have souls. And our souls are made up of our minds, our will, and our emotions. And so we are tripart beings. Now, when these desires of the flesh attack us, they attack us in our soul. They attack us in our thoughts and in our feelings. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, it says, abstain from fleshy lust or fleshy desires, which war against the soul. What part of us do they war against? Not, not necessarily our spirit, not our body, but they war against our mind, our emotions, and our will. And so walking in the flesh doesn't start in the body. It doesn't start with the act. It starts in the mind. In Romans 8, 5, it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And so a carnal thought is what initiates you and I walking in the flesh. How does that work? The enemy brings a carnal thought to us. Carnal thought to you, a carnal thought to me. And thoughts are always accompanied with feelings. And so you have this carnal thought, and then you have these feelings that start to try to come on you and overtake you. And now your body is saying, do it, do it, do it. And, and that is how it works, that when you and I walk in the flesh, it comes to us as a thought. Those thoughts uh, are accompanied by feelings, and they can even trigger reactions in your body. And so now your body starts saying, do it, do it, do what? Do something that's in line with this thought that you had, with these feelings that you're having, go ahead and yield, go ahead and and give in. These fleshy desires, they war against our soul. And so what are we supposed to do when these desires come? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 says to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And so when we have a wrong thought, the scripture teaches us to cast it down. 
The Apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 9, 26. He said, I keep my body under and I bring it into subjection. Now, friend, your mind and body left to themselves will do wild things. They'll do carnal things. They'll think carnal things. If you just let your mind think on whatever it wants to think on, if you just let your body do whatever it's going to do, the result of that will be a bunch of carnal, fleshy stuff. And so here's what's supposed to happen. Your spirit, your spirit man, your inner man, the real you. Uh, the scripture talks about the hidden man of the heart. Ephesians 3 talked about our inner man. So your spirit being is supposed to rule over your mind and your body. When, when it tells us to cast down wrong thoughts... Well, which part of you is going to cast down the wrong thought? It's not your mind. Your mind is the one that's having the wrong thought. It's not your body. You, don't, you, can't, you can't physically take a thought and get rid of it. And so he's talking to your spirit. Your spirit man is the one that's going to cast down the wrong thoughts. When the Apostle Paul said this, this phrase, I keep my body under. That's a very powerful way of saying that what he's revealing to us is that he is not his body. He is a spirit being. He lives in his body and he's saying, I, the real me, the inner man, the spirit being, I keep my body under. And this is how it's supposed to work. You and I, our spirit beings, our inner man's are supposed to keep our minds and our bodies in check. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 4, it says this, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. And so we are supposed to, to possess or control our vessels and not be controlled by our vessels, our spirit man, our inner man, is supposed to control our bodies and our minds. And so there is a spiritual hierarchy of sorts that the, that the Holy Spirit sits at the top of. And He communicates with our spirit beings. He communicates with our inner man. We found that, on, that out on Monday's broadcast that sons of God are led by the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. And so he communicates with our spirit. And then our spirit is supposed to take what we get from the Holy Spirit and make sure that our minds and bodies stay in line. And so if a wrong thought comes to our mind that isn't in line with the Word of God or the Spirit of God, then we, our spirit man, our inner being, is supposed to rise up and cast that wrong thought down. When our body wants to do something that's not in line with the Word of God or what the Spirit of God is prompting us to do, then our spirit man is supposed to rise up and keep our bodies under. This is how it's supposed to work, and this is how you and I are not going to give in to the flesh. Now, we're going to rule over our, our minds and our bodies with our words but our words are connected to our spirit beings. Matthew 12, 34 said that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so how am I going to exercise my authority and my rule over wrong thoughts and over my body wanting to do something it's not supposed to do? I'm going to open up my mouth and I'm going to use my words. Come on, we rule with our words. And friend, if you have a carnal thought, come to you and your body starts saying, do it, do it. If you open up your mouth and speak by your spirit, what the word says and cast down that wrong thought and, and put your body under and say, no, we're not doing that today. We're not going to give into that desire. I'm not going to think on that thought. If you'll do that, you won't give in to the flesh. You know, in Psalm 42 verse five, the psalmist wrote this. He said, why are you cast down? That word cast down means depressed. Why are you cast down or depressed, O oh my soul? That word soul, he's talking about thoughts and feelings. And why are you disquieted or why are you troubled in me? 
Hope in God, for I will yet praise him. Now, I want you to see what's going on. His mind is troubled. He's having uh, depressed thoughts, depressed emotions. And at that moment, friend, you know his body doesn't want to praise the Lord. Come on, if you are dealing with all kinds of troubled thoughts and, and depressed thoughts and you're cast down mentally and emotionally, your body doesn't want to praise. And look what he does. In the middle of that, he says, for I will yet praise him. Well, which part of him is, is doing this? You notice he's talking to his soul. He said, soul, why are you depressed? Why are you cast down? Um, why are you troubled in me? Hope in God, I will yet praise him. What part of him is doing this talking? It's his inner man. It's his spirit being. And he is ruling over his mind and body. His mind's trying to be depressed. And he's saying, mind, why are you so depressed? His body doesn't want to praise. And he's saying, we're yet going to praise the Lord. So in this state, when his body didn't want to praise and his mind was depressed, his spirit ro rose up and ruled over his mind and his body. And friend, this is how you and I are not going to give in to the flesh. Our spirit is going to have to rule over our mind and body based on what we're getting from the spirit of God, based on what we're getting from the word of God. Now to do this, your spirit needs to be strong. If your spirit is weak and your spirit is not fed on the word, you are going to give in to the desires and the dictates of the flesh. Proverbs 18, 14 says this, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Infirmity means weakness of mind and body. And so what's it saying? It says when your mind and body are trying to be weak and trying to go the way of the flesh, your spirit will rise up at that moment and support those weaknesses and say, no, we're not going to think on that. No, we're not going to go the way of the flesh. It's your spirit that, that's going to do that. But your spirit needs to be strong if you're not going to be ruled by your flesh, if you're not going to be dictated by your flesh. If your spirit's going to rule over your mind and body, it needs to be strong. And for your spirit to be strong, it needs a constant, steady dose of the Word of God. And here's the good news. When your spirit's strong, you can keep your flesh under. And if you keep your flesh under, you're going to enjoy the good plans and the good dreams that God has for you. This is good news, isn't it, friend? Now, as we're closing today's broadcast, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, fleshy desires war against the soul, against your mind, against your emotions. Number two, your spirit is supposed to rule over your mind and body. And number three, my spirit needs to be strong so that it can rule over my mind and body. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for helping us to get strong on the inside and to rule over our minds and bodies and not be dictated by the desires of our flesh. Father, we thank you for helping us by our spirits to put down wrong thoughts and to keep our bodies under so that we can walk in the Spirit and enjoy all the good things you have for us. And Lord, we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast and for watching all the broadcasts this week. I'm hooked in faith with you, and I'm believing God with you that you're going to walk in the Spirit better and stronger and more than you ever have before and that you're going to enjoy all the good dreams and all the good plans that God has for your life. And he does have good dreams and good plans and good things prepared for you. And let's make the decision together that we are not going to let the flesh kill any dreams, destroy any dreams that God has for us in Jesus' name. Now, hey, you know the deal. Come back Monday for the next edition of our Faithful Life broadcast. We'll see you then.